feet as we worship and praise our God. Whether you're here in the room or online, just want to welcome you today. Come on, let's put our hands together. Believe God's going to move in this place today. Amen. Come on. Lift it with us.
God. All glory be to you. There's authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. We believe for strongholds to break, for breakthroughs to take place as we encounter his presence today. We're believing for God to do a work in our lives, for God to transform our hearts, our minds, to believe for what only he can do today. Amen. So as we continue to sing about the name of Jesus, I encourage you, speak that name. The name of Jesus. There is power. There's authority. There is breakthrough. Walls break down when we declare the name of Jesus. So let's keep singing. Let's keep praising as we believe for God to do what only he can do today. Come on in your own words. Could you just lift that? Lift that song to Jesus. That song of worship, God. We worship. We praise. You. Inhabit our praise today. Worthy are you, Lord. Inhabit our praise. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Come on church, we declare it together Your name is power Your name is peace your name is love. Your great name, Lord. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like the fire. Jesus, burn. I just want to speak the name.
name of Jesus. For our church, for our city, for our schools. Oh, Jesus. 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 Be you, Lord, oh. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we need you, God. We need you, Lord. We call upon we you, Lord, for you. healing. For deliverance, for salvation, Speak the holy name, Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my There's power in his name. There's authority in his name. We speak over our families, over our city, over circumstances. God, strongholds break in the mighty name of Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Come on, just take a moment to enjoy his presence this morning. I believe he's speaking to you in your own personal way. Jesus, it's Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, to you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call on him today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Nothing like you. Nothing like Jesus, Jesus. There's nothing like his presence today. Nothing like your presence. I believe today that God wants to break through in people's lives, whether here in the room or online a struggle, a need, a situation. There is power in his name. These songs we've been singing, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward. And as they do that, and we're going to read a scripture together, familiar to, I'm sure, many of you, most of you. It comes from Psalm chapter 23. And could you read this aloud with us as, as we put this on the screen today? It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's his promise to us today. 
And we're going to pull out that, that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is with us today. And as we sing this song this morning, it's a choir number with, we have Evangel Chorale and our central worship choir. I encourage you to stand and, and to worship along as you may join in. Uh, but the prayer workers are here as well. If you have a need, whether here in the room or online, to agree together. Come on, let's sing this together.
Come on, we bless his name. Just let the Lord work among us. Just receive of his spirit today. Just receive of hope, deliverance, freedom. If you need forgiveness, in Jesus' name, who died in your place and rose from the dead, receive forgiveness in his salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Just receive faith to move mountains by his spirit today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe in the prophetic gifts, and Savo um, just has a wonderful word on his heart from the Lord that I just want him to share with us for a moment. And so I, I saw an image of us leaning on God, and it's like as though we wavered, but God stood firm and straight. Yeah. And it's, it's as though you had, like I've had surgery on my knees, and I know what it's like to, to lean more than one, and God says, I want you to lean on me. And so he's, it's like as though he's calling us, my children, if you would, I call you to lean on me, to lean on me more than you have. It's not yeah, an abandonment of right. reason and all the things that he has given you, but he's asking us, he's calling yes. you to a place of intimacy. Will you lean yes. on me? Lean on Will you depend on me? Yes. Will you lean on me and my fidelity? Will you lean on me in my capacity? Will you lean on yes. me in my love for you? Amen. Will you lean on me in That's my right. purpose that I have created right. you for? God is calling us into a place to lean and depend on him even more than we have before. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, we receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We lean on you, and thank you. You stay straight, Lord. Amen. That's a great word. Even all the way through first service, I just kept sensing God just wants to give just a gift of steady dependence on God, of a gift of faith of the Spirit in us. And so he's speaking, and let's receive his word. Hallelujah. He's moving all over our city, and uh, he's stirring, and uh, he's moving at James River. He's moving at Evangel Temple and North Point and Second Baptist and Crossway, and he's moving in our church life, and he's sending renewal. He's moving at Evangel University, and we're so grateful to have them as guests with us today. He's moving in all of our lives. Let's just keep, boy, what a good word, leaning on him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen to all we've sung. Amen to his work in us. Yes. Amen. Well, you've been standing a while, but just before you're seated, why don't you just turn around and greet somebody, tell them you're glad they're here. If you don't know them, introduce yourself to them.
Hey, true. I hate, I hate interrupting all of the fellowship that's going on, uh, but it's great to see you all here this morning. Great to be with our online community as well. Uh, if this is your first time joining us at Central Assembly, we invite you to fill out an info card that's there in the back of the pews. You can drop it off on the boxes on your way out. And if you're joining us online, there's a connect with us link. And we'd love to uh, know more about you and be able to say hi. Uh, we're super excited this morning to welcome our guests from Evangel University. Uh, we've got, yes. Um, We've heard from the Chorale already as they've led us in an amazing time of worship. Dr. Rakes and, and uh, Dr. Mike and Darla Rakes are with us today. We're so glad to hear from you. Thanks for coming all the way from Evangel uh, to join us here at Central uh, this morning. Uh, it's great to, to hear from you today. Um, we, there's a lot that's going on as we're starting this fall semester, and the best way to keep track of everything that's happening is to visit centralassembly.org. Uh, there on our website, you can find out everything that's going on from service times, uh, when small groups are meeting, uh, all the uh, wonderful opportunities that we'll have for, for worshiping together, for reaching out to the community. It's all online. And speaking of worship, as we've enjoyed this time here this morning already, uh, we're having a, a fall kickoff for our worship team. So if this is something you've ever wanted to be a part of, but you didn't know how to get involved or you didn't know what's involved once you've said, yes, uh, this Wednesday night, uh, Pastor Josh is going to be leading a, an information meeting in the chapel at 645. And so if you're interested at all in being a part of the worship team, please come out. Please join that uh, so you can learn more about what's going on. And, and this meeting, we're not going to make you sign up for anything. It's no pressure, no obligation. It's just to find out more about our our worship team and worship community. And again, that's at 645 this Wednesday in the chapel. Uh, speaking of the worship team, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, on the second Sunday night of every month, we have our night of worship and prayer. So that's going to be happening on September 11th at 6 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. And we're going to continue our school focus as we're launching this fall semester. Our, our special guest is going to be uh, Dr. Granita Lathan, the superintendent of Springfield Public Schools. We're also going to be hearing from representatives of the universities here in town and just spend time in prayer for teachers and faculty, uh, administrators, parents, and students, uh, praying over all of, 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 our, of our school system and everybody that's involved in the education world. Uh, last year, we also had Pineapple Whip, and that was a pretty big hit. So we want to do that again. Uh, as we move into the fall semester, we're going to have a party in the lobby right after our night of worship and prayer with free Pineapple Whip for everyone. So please come out to that. Be a part of our times of worshiping together and intense prayer focus for our church and our community. Lastly, we've got some changes happening on our Wednesday nights at Central uh, for this fall semester. Uh, Wednesdays, we, we have some core activities that happen. We've got kids going on. Uh, our youth service meets on Wednesdays. Central worship is gathering together on Wednesday nights. We've got small groups that meet and a great new weekly uh, event that's going to be Scriptures with Dr. Jim Bradford. Uh, that's launching on September 7th. And this coming Wednesday night, uh, we're going to be right here in the sanctuary to learn more about the changes and, and the new format that's going to be happening throughout the fall semester. Uh, Pastor Jim's going to share with us more about how each week we're, he's going to unpack scriptures. We're going to meet together at tables to, to talk through that with one another and learn ways to apply the truth of God's word. That is not just information we learn, but it's the, the, the word that transforms our lives. It's truth that we live out in our everyday life. And so we'll have opportunities to learn how to do that. So join us this Wednesday as we uh, get ready to launch that new fall series. Now, it's been great as we've uh, already uh, experienced having Evangel University's chorale with us today. Yeah, hasn't that been awesome? Just an incredible time of worship. 
And they're going to continue leading us in worship before Dr. Rakes comes to share God's word. So we're once again uh, excited to hear from the Evangel University Chorale under Tom Matrone. That was amazing, and thank God is the living word. Uh, when we're about to hear the word of God presented, and we are welcoming students, college students especially back, although we're going to be praying at the end of our service over all of you who may be students, young or old, and we're grateful. That was Pastor Daniel Guy, who did announcements a few moments ago. He's our college pastor, and he does coffee and text. He and his wife, Esther, do coffee and text. Right across the street here. Yes, you got some fans. We have an activity center right across the street here on this side of the building and uh, 9 o'clock every Sunday morning while first service is going on in here. We are so grateful to have Dr. Mike Rakes and his wife Darla with us today. Uh, Mike, Dr. Mike has taken on, as of last year, the presidency of Evangel University, and we thank God for his leadership I believe Dr. Carol Taylor is here as well. Are you here, Carol? Yeah, there she is. Stand, Carol. Uh, she just recently retired as the Evangel University president. Dearly loved, indebted to her great leadership. And I think watching another member of our congregation, uh, President Lednicki, who used to be the president of Central Bible College, which has now been flown... Uh, uh, merged into Evangel University and Dr. Lednicki, we're praying for you and your recovery and thank God for all that you are doing and honor you for the legacy you have left. Amen. <laughs> now, Dr. Rakes is really coming home here because he was the youth pastor at Central Assembly 
way back in the late 1980s. Some of you have been coming up and saying to me, yeah, he was my youth pastor. And I turned out anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't saying that part. But um, uh, Mike and Darla have come from recently pastoring for 15 years at Great Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, Dr. Mike is also, uh, during that time, for part of that time, was the chairman of the board of directors of Oral Roberts University. He is a graduate of Central Bible College and the Assemblies of God Theological Seminary, also has an MDiv and a Doctor of Ministry from Biola University. And uh, he's well-educated, but he has a prophetic and powerful heart, and he loves the Lord, and he loves students. And we just believe God has called him to come and uh, to take on this next season. And we just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here on our Student Welcome Day. Let's welcome Dr. Mike Rakes. Well, good morning. Where's the corral? I'm sure they tried their best. Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> Amazing. Dr. Tom Matrone, where are you at? Would you stand? I don't know if he's in the hallway making transition. Would you thank Dr. Matrone for tremendous, <laughs> terrific, terrific ministry this morning. God bless you. Thank you. Pastor Jim and Sandy for your invitation today and be a part. This is the church we attend when we were in town and uh, Central will always be home for us and uh, those years are very special but uh, thank you for uh, the word and the way you uh, treat the word of the Lord. It's just uh, a strength to our hearts and ministers to us and, and uh, so we're grateful for the opportunity today to be here and share. Darla is just here. Darla, would you stand? Uh, 30 years ago, we were student pastors. She looks the same. She's soon to be uh, Dr. Darla herself. She was uh, working, on, um, working on her degree and, and uh, has picked that back up uh, now. And I'm grateful and excited. Uh, she preached on Friday on identity uh, at the school, and uh, God really showed up in a powerful way. We have two children. Uh, one is, his name is Braden. He was uh, born here in Springfield at Cox South and ended up in the nursery. And so thanks to all of you who uh, care, cared for him. And uh, he learned to sing the, the B-I-B-I-B-I-B -I -B -I -B song here. Uh, it was very special. I don't know who taught him that exact phrase, but, uh, but that was good. And uh, he's given us two wonderful grandchildren, Blake and Bo, uh, and our wonderful daughter-in-law, Heather, is executive pastor uh, at Winston-Salem First. Um, Braden was a teaching pastor. She's executive pastor there. But her uh, grandpa was Carl Connor, who worked here in the National Sunday School office for a number of years before he went to pastor the church in Winston-Salem, where we ended up. And um, so uh, Braden is now fishing full-time, bass fishing on the Toyota uh, uh, bass fishing tour, and uh, uh, so we are um, we are excited to have him. Our daughter, uh, who is very much alive today, is in heaven, and she was our worship pastor, our songwriter, our poet, uh, all around family cut up. Uh, and um, together, after her passing just a few years ago, um, I took her journals and her music and uh, tried to uh, just find uh, my breath and find our life again and. Uh, uh, after believing God in that four-year journey that he would heal her, he chose not to heal her. Uh, but uh, Whitney and I together, and the Holy Spirit wrote this book. I brought copies uh, with it here. Uh, it is not a fun reading. Don't stop and pick it up unless you need it. If you're going through something difficult and heavy uh, or you've lost someone, whether it be to COVID or cancer or some tragedy, or if you know someone who is jaded, I, I, uh, Whitney had... Uh, declared to her doctors and her friends just like we did that she was going to be healed and so at the end of the day I, I Whitney uh, Whitney's journals uh, spoke and the fact the title uh, comes from one of her, her lines where she tells the Lord uh, whatever you want to do with me is fine I'm living my life surrendered and unafraid and, and that's the title of the book it's essentially what happens when the God of miracles doesn't give you a miracle so uh, but I, I mentioned that because uh, it's a part of our story and will forever be, and, and, uh, and so I'm proud of Whitney's life, and, and uh, we'll get to be with her forever, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, my mom and dad, Elwin and Glenna, some of you know, worked at headquarters uh, for a number of years, and uh, so they send their greetings. They're doing fine. Everybody 
uh, and our family all live back in North Carolina. So uh, we have uh, been sent here to the promised land to uh, labor for the Lord. And uh, 30 years ago, we uh, was, I guess now 33 or 34 years ago, we came to uh, Central and um, worked under the uh, ministry of, of Phil Wanamaker. He um, impacted my life in ways that I'm not able to even put into words. I think about him all the time as a mentor, um, uh, taught me and lived the phrase, do right, fear nothing. And uh, that's how I've led my ministry uh, all these years. And I'm grateful for him. And, um, you know, uh, we could have never predicted the highs and lows uh, uh, in our ministry uh, since we've been gone from here. But uh, God has been faithful every step of the way, and, uh, and, and I'm grateful. Um, Pastor Jim was traveling through North Carolina soon after our daughter passed and uh, preached a message at our district council. Uh, and the whole time, I really didn't want to go. And, uh, Whitney had not been gone that long. I just didn't want to go. And, and I made myself go. Uh, and uh, honestly, um, the message that you're... Our pastor preached, uh, just um, put God's arms around my heart and, uh, and helped me uh, to not just breathe again, but to uh, stand up again and to believe that there are, after seasons of incredible suffering, there's also a time of fruitfulness uh, if you will trust the Lord. And I'm grateful, Pastor, to, f for the word that flows through you so humbly and so powerfully and so precisely. And uh, it's an honor for me to stand here today. In fact, I ask all the vice presidents if they would come uh, uh, with me today to Central Assembly because we wanted to say thank you to Central Assembly. Uh, our CFO, Linda, had to fly to uh, Dallas to be with her mom and dad, Linda, Miss Linda Allen. So she is not here, but the rest of them are. Uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Dr. Michael Colstead, would you stand and just let these folks see who you are? Thank you for being here today. Our chief academic officer at the university is Dr. John Spence, uh, right here. We just say thank you to John. This is a church he attends as well, and uh, as a people and a, uh, a team builder uh, par excellence, and I'm, I'm grateful to him. Uh, our vice president for enrollment, who's had just a phenomenal year this year, uh, Chris Belcher, just right here. Thank you, Chris. And our brand new vice president for student development, a uh, name that you might be familiar with from the National Office, but it's uh, Mark Insminger. Mark, uh, here's Mark right here. Thank you. And working out of the Office of the President, I thought I would just mention, uh, I'm not sure uh, where they're at in, in the room, but uh, Am Amariah and uh, Derek uh, help serve. If you're in the room, wave at me. They may be out at the, at the booth, but if you stop by the book table, uh, uh, they'll, uh, they'll be there to greet you and, and, and help you if you're interested. Uh, here are some picks that uh, we selected to show, share with you. Uh, these are some fresh picks from, um, there's the CBC uh, Gardens. You can see just how beautiful uh, it all looks. It uh, doesn't look amazing. And you helped, uh, you, Pastor, and the board were so generous and helped us to pull off this. I'm very proud of that uh, piece uh, just outside the seminary. It's beautiful. And these are uh, uh, chapel images. And um, I'm just grateful to the Lord for his blessing and his help. Um, the Spirit is always doing a new thing, and uh, we are grateful that a hundred years ago that uh, CBI, who was embedded in your basement, uh, has, has become uh, embedded in, in the university, and, and we're thankful to the Lord for that. And the truth is that Evangel, as a Pentecostal liberal arts uh, institution, um, it all kind of emerged and came out of uh, Greece uh, you, you may not know, but the, the, um, not just the, the language, but the system of liberal arts education came from, from uh, Greece and from uh, Rome. And um, the, the idea is that you uh, essentially learn from all across the, the broad spectrum of God's creation, you learn uh, uh, about not just the world and about humanity, but you could also see the wonders of, of God in that. And the uh, my message today will actually come from the uh, social, social or from the natural sciences uh, department, uh, as you'll hear in a, in a few moments. But uh, I'm very proud to um, to lead Evangel in this uh, season, uh, to step into this place because I believe more than ever that God is preparing uh, a special message and a special move of His Spirit through all of the vocations 
uh, that will uh, emerge in the, in the coming decades. And uh, we are raising up not just uh, the ministers uh, and those that will work in the church, but those that will be uh, far from the church doors uh, representing the glory of God in, in all these spaces and places and and, uh, and, and I'm great for that. Ironically, the word, when it says liberal arts, had nothing to do, wasn't a juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposition from the word conservative. It had to do, uh, the, the original Latin, it had to do with this idea of nonconformity or, or uh, being free uh, of, of no impression, uh, no oppression. But ironically, uh, culture, which would tell you that they're all about liberal arts is the actual uh, opposite. Their culture is incredibly incongruent when it comes to that because they've closed off in most mainstream institutions the ability to have academic freedom and talk about Jesus. Uh, much of what happens in your mainstream universities is anti-Jesus. And um, uh, there, there is no clear, clean academic freedom when you're teaching in some of these universities, even though they will hide behind that phrase. Uh, and I think there's a, uh, an oppressive thinking in this generation, uh, and that is that if you have other thoughts other than how culture tells you to think, that somehow uh, you are weird. But what I say to our students all the time, let's just get one thing straight. We believe that there was a young Jewish girl who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and gave birth to a Messiah once we get that clear, really, after that, everything else is just home free. Be because the culture is never going to agree with that. Culture is never going to rationally believe that God does anything. Uh, if there is a God, in, in, in their own words, that, that he would do anything. So since we're already out here, why don't we step into a place of faith and love and grace and compassion and show that there is a God that he does love people and through whatever vocation or job I end up uh, working or serving in, the Lord's grace can flow through that uh, as my platform of love and obedience unto him. Culture has been making the case for evangel to not only exist, but to uh, it's certainly elevated my determination to rescue, uh, equip and deploy uh, for, to make a great impact on this culture, this generation. And uh, the truth is that by the time this freshman class turned 35, 40% of the jobs that exist now will be automated. Uh, they'll, they'll disappear into machines and robots. And so uh, it's, it's very important that, uh, that li the uh, Pentecostal liberal arts education exists because the Holy Spirit is going to innovate brand new jobs through the graduates that we have so that they're not just being trained in some technical skill to go and do this, that it's not so much about a job as it is learning uh, to be grounded and founded in the Holy Spirit who is the smartest person in the universe and can lead us and lead them to lead a renewal in their generation. So Evangel delivers this Pentecostal ethos on a broad-based educational curriculum which prepares students for uh, this world. And so this summer, I literally spent uh, just about a month thinking on this question. Why does evangel work? What, what is the secret sauce of evangel? Uh, what is that, that secret sauce? And, and I kept coming back to this idea of the transformation of the heart, that education alone is not enough. Something else is missing. And, and what's, what's missing is that transformation that happens. You know, the, the difference between, uh, now we've got a, a, a campus, uh, campus full of, uh, of young people and, and a big surge of freshmen uh, coming in this time. And what's the difference between a college freshman uh, and, a, and a high school uh, um, kid on a lunch break in May? It's about a six-week summer vacation. So you've got to pray for us because we want to we give them the secret sauce of evangel this fall so that they kind of begin to catch it. And they will. Uh, because they're in this environment that has been, has been created. And so these questions about how do, how do we cooperate with God and his plan for our world. So as I thought about that, I contemplated this idea. How does a seed become a tree? How does a seed, a single seed, how does a seed become a, a tree, a large tree? So I want to share you some of those uh, answers that I've learned from the Department of Natural and Applied Sciences and from God's Word. If you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 12. 
I'm just going to look at one verse here, though I'm, my remarks are coming from this whole section. And I'll just quote it. It'll be close to what you have on the screen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. That we are continually, we know Jesus said you have to pick up your cross and follow me. That the expectations often of what we have in following uh, Jesus, uh, it's more than just adding on the teachings of Jesus so that we can be nice and, and do certain nice things. It is literally the laying down of who you thought you were and what you thought you were going to do and saying, Lord, I want to now do my part in whatever uh, role that you have for me to play. And so the text here uh, comes with this idea. The Greeks have come to Philip and Andrew and they say, sirs, we would see Jesus. And I remember uh, P.W., Phil Wanamaker's uh, um, little plaque on the podium. I got to preach one time at Central back in the day. This was a major thing. Most of you were probably not there. Uh, I could go through my text r really quick. My sermon went pretty fast, as I recall. <laughs> Uh, Joshua chapter 3, you may still have the notes in your Bible, but <laughs> the little phrase says, sirs, we would see Jesus. So these uh, Greeks come up to Philip and Andrew and they're like, well, we want to see Jesus. And so Philip and Andrew are like, well, this is odd. We've got some foreigners, even though they've come up to the temple to worship, we've got these foreigners that want to see Jesus. So they go to Jesus and they ask this simple question. Uh, hey, Jesus, these Greeks want to see you. And Jesus' answer, you would think that was a simple, well, yes, I'll see them, or no, I won't see them. But it seems that Jesus, like, here's the real question when someone asks a question. So they think they're asking this one question, and here's what Jesus says. And he says, uh, basically, he predicts his death. I say unto you, except a grain of wheat fall on the ground and die. You know, and Philip and Andrew had to be looking at one another saying, did you catch the answer? Because I, I just missed the answer. I don't, what's he talking about? A grain of wheat falling on the ground and die. You can see uh, the, the writer pulling out the context here of what, that what Jesus said. That Je Jesus began speaking about his own death. And of course, we now know why. Because he came for a greater purpose. We serve a global God. We serve a God that cares about all people and all cultures. And that Jesus uh, came... Uh, it, for God so loved the whole world, right, that he gave his only son. All, all of that's in context. And so uh, here comes uh, Jesus, and Jesus, uh, it says that it, it's time for the Son of Man to be glorified. So now we have uh, this idea of being glorified and death, that it doesn't make sense, that there's a sense of, of what makes sense in the natural actually makes no sense in the supernatural, in the, in the mystical, in the spiritual realm, it's sometimes hard to make sense of how a, a virgin can give birth to a baby or, or how someone's premature death makes any sense whatsoever in all of the cosmos. But thanks be to God, uh, because Jesus carries this message, this embodies the message of what it means to, uh, um, to live devoted completely to God's will. And he says in 24, he says, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Similar to Genesis 1:11, then God said, "Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields, uh, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself." This is the irony of a seed becoming a tree, because inside the tree is the tree. Uh, the tree will drop seeds, but not every seed that falls in, onto the ground will become a tree. The difference between a seed and a tree is the environment upon which it falls. Is the soil right? Are the nutrients right? Does it take root here? That interestingly enough, even in Genesis 1.11, you could see that God has always been about what's coming next. That God's always about the next. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, on and on. There's so many illustrations we could give. Uh, God, uh, um, the seed uh, of Abraham. God instructed the first Adam to be fruitful and multiply. And now being the second Adam, Jesus follows that suit that, that if you fall into the ground and die, you're going to bear much fruit. And he says that to Peter in their conversation by the fire. Not in those words, but in other words, saying it's don't worry about their life. Someone's going to um, tie up your hands and take you where you don't want to go. In other words, 
life is not going to go exactly like you expect, but it's going to be awesome. I mean, how can we come to the day of Pentecost and, and you're looking at the day of Pentecost, you're reading it in Jesus' words in chapter one, it's amazing. And he doesn't say, hey, you know, go and wait and Terry, you know, there in the upper room. And by the way, you really need to make sure you press into that prayer meeting because not too long from now, all of your houses are going to burn down and you're going to be chased out of here. You're, you're going to be refugees and some of you are going to get killed. It's, gonna, it's just going to be terrible that Jesus doesn't tell them that, does he? Because that really wasn't important. The process of going into the ground is our personal stories and our personal pains and our personal sufferings. <laughs> but the important thing is that you go into the ground and then sprout and become what you're supposed to become. Whereas even Peter says uh, to the early church, you've got to endure suffering like a good soldier. Like, I, don't, I don't know where, where we get the expectation that somehow it's not going to be painful to be a Christian. I'm, I am thrilled. I am thrilled. It's, got, it's gotten a lot easier to raise money for evangel from what culture's doing. Just keep doing what you're doing, guys. Right? You're making the case to say we need our young people in an environment that believes in the supernatural where they can become educated, put their roots down deep in some Pentecostal soil, and become the fruit trees uh, that will feed the entire world uh, and the needs of our world. So the actual answer to the question apparently was complex, and Jesus, in all his candor, shares about it. This idea of new life and resurrection and multiplication was the deal. It's no wonder in Luke 10, 2, he says, Pray you therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers, because when a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it's going to produce a massive harvest. It's common to say that trees come from seeds. And that's that germination process where the seed, the seed goes in and has an embryo, a group of cells, are there and the nutrients are there to kind of get it started and the little, uh, the little roots go down in the ground after it's moistened. But what I find interesting is that that seed, as it cracks open, disappears. And for all of us, we go through change. What, whatever, whatever you're going through now, you're in the process of changing again and again. Uh, that the Spirit is ever moving us uh, toward the eschaton, toward the end of all things. That, that, that God is never static. That in my head, I thought uh, Whitney's grandkids were going to be at my table and life was going to go this way. And, but, but life doesn't, life doesn't uh, uh, stay still. It's not a Polaroid uh, picture. Uh, look at uh, Google that. You, you won't know what that is. But, uh, it, it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an iPhone movie that is moving fast. But this is how God set things up. But in farming, it, that process I just explained is germination. But in farming, there's also something that I'm suggesting is morally wrong that is a very real thing, and you can Google this too, but it's called termination. Uh, this, this idea of a terminator technology in that they infect the parent seed or the parent plant so that when it produces seeds, the seeds are actually sterile. The point of that is the seeds are genetically engineered to be sterile uh, so that the uh, um, farmers have to purchase more seeds. Now, they, they grow faster. The point is you get a crop faster, but there's just one crop for that seed. That's it. It doesn't reproduce itself. It's the, and they call it the terminator technology. Uh, the truth is that God has set things up to give life and give life and give life and life and life and life. And this is how he set it up from Genesis. There's, there's an amazing thing. Uh, as, as resources such as water and nutrients come into uh, our lives, that the seed that we see that germinates becomes a gateway to something future. Like most of the freshmen coming in have no idea who they're going to be. Uh, you could be in here and you're in your 30s and 40s saying, I'm not even sure right now who or what God is doing. But that's a, that's a part of the, the process of, of a renewal and rebirth and, and all of that. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him, that they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. It, its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. And I believe the spiritual health of the local church and the spiritual health of the individual family are more critical now than ever before. I don't want to see the Pentecostal forest into which we're raising up these young saplings 
to become mighty oaks of righteousness. I don't want them raised up in a forest that has become desolate itself. In other words, no matter how old you are in this room, no matter what you go through, whether it's the, the horrific uh, suffering of the tragedy of something unexpected or uh, something less than that, Either way, you have to stay in the place where you're getting the nutrients from the, uh, uh, from the ecosystem, from the spirit-driven ecosystem that God has created, the health of the local church. And more could be said about this idea of genetic, uh, genetically modified spirituality. I'll just leave that for another time. But I'll just say this, that you have to organically learn how to feed on the Lord's presence how to be that, and one of those is by always being in community. And I tell the young people all the time, do not bypass church. Even in your college years, do not bypass going to church. It's a trick of the enemy. You have to continually stay in the presence of the Lord, in the community of the faithful, so that when you may not even feel like it, but when you lift your hand up to worship the Lord during, during a song, right, that has, a, that has a direct impact on everybody around you. You are helping to keep the ecosystem of the spirit alive and well and working. And it seems as if uh, COVID certainly has hit us between the eyes related to all of that. And I would just call us to this place that we've got to get our children and our grandchildren into the presence, in, into the community of the faithful, into the place where God's presence is appreciated and loved, into this environment where every seed can continue to grow and become the tree God has called it to, and where the old trees can pick up nutrients too. This is why mature and strong local healthy uh, churches matter in our fellowship. That if the parent church becomes starved or even sterile in their thinking, not participating with what God wants to do next, you will ultimately shrivel up and die. You have to continually let the Spirit do something new and new again and new again and new again. What I now know is that, uh, all, that all forests and all trees go through storms. Storms blow through all of your lives. Some are more difficult than others. Some are more tragic than others. But everybody has to survive a storm. Everybody has the chance to survive a storm, right? I think the storms are what make you um, a mentor to the next generation because they can look and say, you weathered your stuff. You weathered surviving adolescence. You weathered surviving you know, a roommate, you weathered surviving all of these things, so therefore, uh, I can too. We need, we need this ecosystem of the Spirit. God's plan is germination, but the fallen angel's plan is termination. There's a terminator technology named the prince of the power of the air that seeks to destroy God's possibilities in the next few generations by making this generation of, of clones of um, religion, nor having a form of, of good godliness but denying the power of God. You can even see it in the sterile nature of the current mindset to alter the seed of marriage, the way God set up the process of marriage. And perhaps the great enrollment cliff of 2025, where we see graduating high school students, uh, the sheer volume of kids graduating high school has fallen 15%. U.S. births uh, have fallen to a 32-year low in 2018. The CDC says the birth rate is, it was, is in record slump, and the U.S. birth rate continues to go down. Could it be that culture's message of, um, of not honoring the, what God set up with male and female, could it be that culture themselves are sterilizing uh, any sense of fruitfulness? Simple biblical logic makes the case to support Christian higher education. It also makes the case that you must get involved in your church. You must stay dedicated. You must stay devoted. The young people not just need to see you lift your hands, but they need to see you pull out your phone and text in your offering because they are a gateway to the future that God wants to do right here in this church and in this city. The young seeds bumping and rambling around the foyer are containers 
of what's coming next. I think the main difference between a seed then and a tree is the environment where it's planted. You matter. Your presence in the room matters to these young people today. And it matters to the kids Roman uh, that will be in the foyer in a few minutes after Children's Church. It matters. Just your physical presence to say, God, I'm honoring you. God, I'm I'm, uh, worshiping you. And I want to break off the, the demonic thoughts that would tell you that the local church is on the way down. Watch out. The local church is on the rise up because God is doing a new thing all over, not just the country, but the world to put together biblically functioning communities that are stronger, that are better, and that, yes, offer an alternative from the demonic sterilization mindsets. I don't know. It may not be for anybody. The phrase kept coming to me this morning, and I'll just mention it. But did you know that the, the, the demonic realm is sterile? There are no more demons now than there were in Jesus' day because they're sterile. They can't create. All they do is mimic. And I would just say to you that the Spirit of the Lord knows what he's doing. He is raising up an army, both women and men, to represent his name all over the earth that the glory of the Lord, right? Romans 8, this rumbling, this groaning. We don't even know what we're praying for. We're praying, Holy Spirit, come and do what you want to do. Holy Spirit. And it all comes from a seed. It comes from who you are. You are made up. You were raised in an environment. You, you've become a part of, a, of an ecosystem. So now do your part all the way until the end. My daughter used to say that even the smallest thing done with great love can impact the world. This is what my dream is for Evangel and my dream is for you personally as you're a part of this great church that you would begin to feel and understand I am valuable. This is my season to shine. Look, James tells us uh, in the other metaphor that life is just like a flower, that we bloom and we're here and then we're quickly gone. Since that is the case, Why don't we do our part? The great cloud of witnesses are watching. Why don't we do our part in our little uh, pocket of historical uh, overview? This is our moment to shine. This is our moment to be what God wants us to be. And I say it to evangel employees and faculty and staff all the time. It's evangel's turn now to step up and be the bright light that God started in 1955. Culture has turned, culture has moved and shifted, and suddenly liberal arts has a message. We have a message that God wants to speak through absolutely every discipline and every vocation, not just wants to, will speak through every discipline, vocation, and job, even the jobs that haven't been invented yet, that the Spirit of the Lord has already clear in his throat to say what he wants to say to this culture. When you participate, amen, I feel it and believe it. When you participate in prayer meetings, when you come to worship, when you bring your kids to every student event, God is uh, giving them nutrition that will get them through the coming onslaught of this anti-Jesus mindset. I don't think there's anything to fear. I think, I think this is a time when those of us that would label ourselves Pentecostal, full of God's spirit, ready to to step into whatever, this is our moment to say, Holy Spirit, I'm clueless on how to handle this, but you're so amazing. You can handle it by your great wisdom. Amen. God bless you, Central Assembly. Thank you, Dr. Rex. What a great word to us. Will you stand, all of you, with me, please? Uh, While the worship community comes back uh, to the front and going to, in a moment, lead us in in an expression to the Lord as we, before we dismiss, I'd just like uh, to invite you who are students who would like to be included in in a prayer. We'd just like to pray over you, whether you're really young or middle school or high school or 
Maybe you're 75 and you're working on an online degree right now. You're a student of some kind of any age and you'd like just to be prayed over. We believe by the Spirit of God. I love it. In germination, not termination. That God's germinating something new. And you're, you're going to just pledge your education and the development of your skills and your curiosity to the Lord as He builds a generation. And we'd love to pray over you. I was a student for a lot of years and it's tough life. But we'd like to pray life into you and grace for you. So if you're a student and you'd like to be included, just why don't you just crowd out in here to the altar area. Just step forward. That's right. There we go. Amen. Just come on up. And I want to thank all of those of you who are youth volunteers, children's ministry volunteers. You care for babies in the nursery. You, you uh, preschool volunteers. We're indebted to you. We are all about, we, we, our, our fifth core value is to leave a God-sized footprint. And for us, that's a global footprint, but it's also a generational footprint. That's why this is so incredibly important. Right, great. Why don't you all, about a step forward, just to let some people come in behind you there. Amen. Look at them all. It's great to see all of you. Tons of students, and we love and appreciate you all. The rest of us, let's just reach our hands out to them. And Father, we want to thank you for right now in the name of Jesus. For every one of our students, young or old, thank you for what you're germinating in their lives. Thank you for the call of God on their lives. I pray their hearts will be on fire for you, Lord. I pray that the passion of their heart, the affections of their heart will be greater than the affections of the things of, of this world, and they will love you supremely. I pray, God, that you will help them to grow in mind, heart. I pray they'll grow in faith, like Jesus, in favor with you and with, with, with those around them. I pray that even at a young age, you'll teach them to be leaders and not just followers. And We just pray in the name of Jesus that you'll place your hand upon them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, those of you um, up here up front, just, just right now, just open your heart to the Lord. Just, just receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Just, just be filled with His Spirit. Just... Let the Lord strengthen you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray. Just fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. Hallelujah. Guide their friendships. Guide their studies. Give them strength when they're dead tired. And my God, I pray when, when, when classes seem intimidating and exams seem overwhelming, my God, give them grace and give them strength. And most of all, just put your spirit upon them, Lord. Let them sense they're not alone. As we heard earlier in this service, let them just lean on you, Lord. For whatever they're facing this semester, we just lean on you. And you're going to stand strong and straight, and you're going to be with them, and we thank you. So now may the blessing of the Lord be upon our students. We thank you for them. We bless them. And may this be the greatest year of their lives, this year, as they walk and serve you and learn and study in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. We're proud of all of you. Wow. Very proud and grateful for every one of you. You can find your way back to your seat if you like, but let's the rest of us stay standing and uh, let's close with this amazing song that the choir will lead us in. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power to, to the, the Lord. Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God, He is wonderful. We sing hallelujah.
Honor and glory and power to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you need to start a relationship with Jesus, there's going to be some of our pastors up here, or possibly the person you came with, ask them, and you can know new life today, that seed of Jesus' life planted in your heart, and we encourage you to, to respond and open up your heart to him. Next Sunday, I'll continue our series on friendship. I'm going to be talking about one of the most famous friendships in the Bible and how it applies to some of those closer relationships in our lives. And it's just been wonderful to be with you. We might get a reprise of that, I think, of what we just heard. So you don't have to leave if you don't want to. But those of you who uh, want to and need to leave, may you go in the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we also go with gratefulness to the evangel community. And, and uh, Dr. Mike, thank you. God bless you. And Darla, thank you. You may be dismissed if you like. God bless you.